My name is Jake Bowker. Um, I'm a born and raised Portavillian. Grew up here on the east side of Portaville. Uh, growing up, I, I did move around quite a bit with my family throughout Portaville, but I've gone through the, the Portaville school system uh, for my entire educational experience, except for two years in the Burton School District when I was in elementary school and lived on that side of town. So I have grown to, to love and appreciate all that our school district has offered me um, because of the opportunities I had in our school district, I was able to then pursue a, a degree in, in Southern California and, and explore the world and then come back and make it full circle to come back and give back to this community that I credit a lot of my uh, opportunities to. There, there's a quote, it's an anonymous quote that really sticks to me and I think about this a lot in, in everything I do, not just here at, at work but at home and how I talk to my kids and how you know I interact with friends and colleagues. and. Um, you know, I always like to look at myself and, and think about how I am challenging my own reflective, uh, my own practices. I like to be a reflective practitioner. And, um, you know, there's a science to receiving feedback. And one of the things that my grandma taught me growing up is uh, you don't know what it's like to be treated like or to be a servant. So let me go back to that. One of the things that my grandma taught me growing up is you don't know what it's like to be a servant until you're treated like one. And that speaks volumes about who you are and your character. You know, working as a server in a restaurant, you really learn the value of customer service um, and, and to, make, to make someone's day and to really celebrate, you know, the experiences that others have and look through the lens of others. It's really neat to look through the lens of students, through our teachers, and to have the empathy to do that. You know, one of the quotes, that, again, that stands out to me is, excellence is never uh, an accident. You know, it's always the result of high intention, sincere effort, intelligent design, um, direction, skillful execution, and the vision to see obstacles as opportunities. And, you know, that's an anonymous quote that, you know, kind of goes to that Vince Lombardi mentality and all of these famous quote coaches. That it wasn't an accident. Their excellence was never an accident. It's, it's looking at things holistically and reflecting on our practices. Um, I am excited to get mentored and, and continue to evolve and, and challenge my own biases and to challenge my own, um, you know, uh, inexperiences and to see how can I fill those voids and who can I have help me with that? Because again, we're only as good as our collective and how we empower each other. I would love nothing more than to have our staff continue to see ideas that I would have missed and then to embrace those and then give credit to them because if it's student centered and it's good for them and if we can, we should. And I, I'm excited about all that we have in, in, you know, in front of us here at Granite Hills High School. And uh, you know, the Grizzlies, the Grizzlies motto, you're gonna see Grizzlies all over town, Mr. Palmy. I, 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 I know that our community is going to see greatness come from this school. And it's not gonna, because of it, it won't be because of me. It will because of, be because of our students and our collective effort to see how we put everything together. I think the big thing too is in Porterville, it's neat to have a homegrown sense of where you come from. And it is neat to, it's important to know that people come back because they, they care about the values and the upbringing that they've experienced here in this community. Um, there's something special about being from the Central Valley. And you know, in my background, my great grandpa grew up as a, as a turkey and citrus farmer here. My grandmother grew up off Success Drive. So I grew up on this side of town knowing that as a kid, you don't know what you don't know in terms of what you have and, ha and don't have, you go to appreciate how we treat each other and how we support each other as a community. And in this community, you'll see it more and more, the, the, the community partners care about our youth and, and it's important for our teachers who come back, that's usually a common denominator. They care about what their experiences were and they wanna continue that, that uh, opportunity for other youth coming up. Um, I think it speaks volumes when you have people come back to their community and to their home schools as alumnus and alumni to teach and to continue that circle and that cycle of helping others reach their aspirations. And it, it speaks volumes when I go to interview and talk with people who, who came back, because just like myself, I came back to this community. There's a common denominator there in that we have this sense of, of, of connection to the fact that we know what the trials are in this town if you don't have support systems in place. And you also know 
um, how rewarding it is to see people go out and then come back to continue to give back and reinvest in the community. Uh, we don't want to see a, an exodus of people who do well and then go and invest all of the, the values that we've instilled into other communities necessarily. We like to see them bring that back to our, to our youth. No, this is, this is a special opportunity because it, I've always thought in the back of my head what it would be like to be a facilitator of systems and learning as a lead learner, as a principal. You know, I, I've grown up in Boy Scouts and you know a structure. I, I'm an Eagle Scout, I grew up in this community where you, you have a hierarchy and a structure of following uh, certain directives and systems that lead to, to system change. I mean, working at a summer camp for eight years, you do know the importance of there's a director and you know your role of how that system works. We're a fine-tuned machine. And a parallel to that, in a lot of organizations, that's, that's essential to have. And so I've always loved the idea of leadership. I've, um, I've always loved the idea of being able to serve. I have this mentality of a servant leadership. I am no better as a human being than anybody else. But to be in that position of, of being entrusted to facilitate and um, embed ideals that are essential to growing human beings. I mean, we're the whole being of students, but also the qualitative and quantitative piece of looking at data to inform our decisions as a, as a collective, it isn't about me. And as a principal, the great thing is you get the opportunity to zoom out and see everything there, immerse yourself in what's there, see the current cultures of everything. There's cultures of achievement, cultures of a sense of belonging, uh, cultures of, of um, of our students feeling uh, supported. There's, it's not just a, a culture of, there's not one culture, there's different cultures and we have to be mindful of what our systems are and what we do to support all of our teachers, staff, students, community partners and be visible because we're servants of our state. We're servants to those and we do not exist in this role without our, our, our customers are our students and their parents. And I always say students come first and staff come a close second. I see that as a teacher going back in, in you know, 2016 was my last year in the classroom. I always knew my role as being on the front line and I str strongly believe the teacher has the biggest power of influencing their students on a day-to-day -day basis, but the leaders, your administration and your principal and everybody there have the biggest opportunity to support and empower our teachers so that they can import, empower and support our students. So I see it as a great opportunity to take my tacit experience as a teacher and as an assistant principal uh, and then coming down to this role to say, how can I continue to foster and facilitate growth in every aspect where our students feel, feel safe and belonging, but also are growing in their academic and um, you know, uh, their character qualities as well. My first goal uh, here at Granite Hills is to really embed myself and immerse myself into what we have uh, in place. You know, we're coming, this is not just about Granite Hills. As a nation, we're coming off of a relaunch of a pandemic, a, a COVID year. So the last 15 months have been a trying experience for everybody. Uh, we might have experienced something at a different level of, of struggle and trial, but our students have been enduring a lot of stress. Um, so it's a fine balance of knowing to, where to show grace and patience in terms of meeting the needs for social emotional support. So my first goal is to realize, Jake, you need to move slow to move fast. So take the time to really get to know and build relationships with everybody who are here, who is here, who. Everybody has a story. Everybody has, some of our staff and team members have been here since this school has opened, but even that, they have had trials personally due to COVID. So I need to talk, stop, um, surround myself with my collective of people that are truth tellers to say, hey, here's what we're experiencing. Take the time to listen, digest everything, and see how I can now take um, our resources to then support and, and recalibrate our systems to get our students to relaunch back into an in-school setting. Um, I, I, know, I do know that we're serving more than just our staff and students. Our families and community partners are, are really looking forward to having their students be back on a campus and having a lot of the student body services and, and athletics and cultural uh, events going on. They really rely on that growth because it's a, it's a, it extends to the home life too. What these kids are experiencing at school really extends to how they feel and how they're feeling supported at home. Um, so I wanna see and be sensitive to all of those things. So my first goal is to look at that as a culture piece. Um, again, the culture of acceptance, support, and, and feeling um, you know, uh, understood and heard is key for me. You know, it would be, it's very important for me to learn and actually see what's in place, how I can take my experiences to then foster and, and look at my team to say, how can we revise and look at system change? Systems are essentially, they're imper it's imperative to have systems evolve and change based on our needs. 
it, we cannot continue to do the exact same thing. Our students change. Our, our needs and our, our driving factors change. So we have to have the right drivers in place to then look at how we look at everything from a zoomed out lens to say, let's look at everything on campus from how we greet people as they walk in to how our students eat lunch to how our students go and, and dismiss and enter school to what they do in the classroom. One of the things, in, in addition to the goal that I have this year, the action that I'll actually take. Now, that's a goal for this year, to, to move slow, to move fast, to be patient, to look at and immerse myself into um, what we already have in place, and to study and listen. Um, but the action I'll actually take place is, uh, for me, I just need to be visible. Um, I need to be approachable. I need to be out and about to learn and talk to our students, talk, uh, you know, talk to parents, uh, talk to teachers, go into classrooms, see what's in place listen and actually take note of what, what people are saying and how I can say, what, what can we do to support the, the authentic needs that we have in order to improve upon those concerns um, and to celebrate what's going on that's going well. I mean, to really have those quick wins. You know, when students are feeling excited to be here, that's a quick win. That means we're doing things right. You know, every student deserves a, the right to feel safe and a sense of belonging at, at school. So when we are as a collective doing that, our entire staff need to be applauded for that because that's, that safety is, is paramount. And, and I know a lot of concerns will exist with how we handle coming off of a COVID year in terms of guidelines in place. So making sure that we are adjusting to those concerns. Um, I need to, to design and embrace culture building opportunities for our students and our staff. Um, you know, again, relaunching. So things that we did two years ago across the district and across the nation, we might have to start slowly and take baby steps to see, can we get to that point again? Um, and then have the right drivers in place to help with that. Um, so, so that's, that's a big goal for me is, is looking at a culture of acceptance and achievement. And my action is to be visible, hear out staff, hear out students, and then come back and bring that to my team to say, how can we now as a collective respond to those needs and what people are saying? And I want to share out and share back with staff, here's what I'm hear, hearing you say. You know, I've had the opportunity to meet several of our staff uh, during their prep period uh, this last school year and just to send a survey out to get some feedback. A lot of great things uh, staff are saying about how they feel um, amidst, you know, in, in, in the midst of this COVID experience. So you would, that's, that's a, a, a good feeling to know that people are, are not losing heart about who they are and, and their experiences here at Granite Hills. Well, the great thing is this is neat in that there are so many great things happening at Granite Hills that I've, I've heard about in the past, but the general population doesn't always hear about it. You know, growing up where my family all went to Portoville High School, there's this sense of pride in Portoville High School. I went to Menachee High School and I was an alumni there. I have a sense of pride about that but we serve the same community, the same goals, the same needs. And one of the things that I've learned in the past six weeks about Granite Hills is we have the, the, you know, the computer uh, operations and, and development education pathway code that is, is continuing to evolve. We have the Academy of Careers and Education, ACE, that has great um, foundations in place. And then we have the law, justice, and ethics pathway with our new facility. But the facility is a symbolic of what would, the potential and the opportunities, which is great. It's still a building without the heartbeat of how we as a collective support and make it student centered. And I think in talking with our pathway leads and our community partners, there are so many great things. And I'm excited to see in, in my plans and talking with our pathway leads and with our administration team, what we will be offering in terms of ideas. It's great to sit down and ideate with those leads and say, what about this? And we jot those down, we calendar them out and we're like, okay, let's not lose sight of that because that will really get our students to have opportunities that are paramount in, in their success in their future. And it's exciting for me to share with my colleagues all over town to say, check out what's going on here and what our systems are doing and to have our students be front and center of that because our staff has a heartbeat for that. And I, I get chills and goosebumps to see our students be front and center doing things that will, will val be valuable for them um, throughout their lives. Uh, whether they pursue a career in any of those pathways, that would be ideal, but even without that, they are going to gain skills and insights that will be very, very important for them moving on to life um, in terms of how they conduct themselves in the public and how they have the discipline to be professional in all their demeanors. I mean, from our interns and so forth. Um, you got to experience firsthand at graduation. We had some of our students collaborate with students at Menachee in the MTA pathway to really help with our live streaming of the graduations to keep that system to be sustainable. Think about that. I don't have that skill set. It'd be great to have our students to say, hey, I need some help. Can you help me with this? And then to get them to, to really have a system that's sustainable for all of our students. You mentioned something about being out on an island, so to speak. The funny thing is I actually physically taught on an island in Avalon for, for eight years, which is part of Long Beach Unified. And in a sense, it fostered a sense of innovation. And our students 
had a chip on their shoulder that they didn't get the same experience as the mainland students all the time, part of the same district. So we worked together to really combat that impression of, of what we do, and we had a sense of pride about that. And I'm excited to bring that here. Again, being on this side of town and, and growing up when, you know, Granite Hills wasn't a full institution at that time when I was a student, it would, it's great to see, uh, to come back and say, well, I'm from here too. I come from the same cloth, and I, I think we'll be doing great things. Our, our students are capable of everything we expect them of, uh, of doing. And so I think it'll be great to have our teams really foster that. One of the, the great things that Dr. Barba has allowed us to do as an admin team is he distributes his leadership and authentically believes in us to, to, to fail forward, in a sense, to try something, to come to him for his questions and support. But he really allows us to build that tacit experience on coaching others up, to try and take risks. Um, I think nothing worth doing is easy, and to be able to have the opportunity to not just hear about it, but actually sit down and do it and practice it, the, the, the skills that he's allowed us to develop in that is he, he knows and values that each of us as administrators bring our own skills and strengths to the table, and we have the opportunity to take our own personal experience and professional experience to then say, how can I use what I have and have the humility to know not to dismiss my strengths, but to also know what weaknesses and areas of growth I, ha I have and to surround myself with people that can edify those. I am not, I'm not capable of doing everything on my own and I'm very fully conscious that I have to surround myself with a team of 60 plus teachers and 25 plus support staff that are extremely essential to knowing, to learning their strengths and giving them the autonomy, the mastery and purpose to do those and to give the drive in what they do, as Daniel Pink says. And I think edifying that and supporting that is what Dr. Barba did with us as an admin team. And I also was able to take what I've learned from administrators in Long Beach Unified, Visalia Unified, kind of take away and, and bring a lot of that to my, uh, my toolkit to say, okay, this is a great opportunity and experience I've had that I've seen success with. Is it going to be something that we can take our needs here? So going to that, the lowest level of thinking is making a duplicate photocopy from a Xerox machine. We can't do that. We have to take what our needs are, take all of those experiences and what we've had, and then build what we need. Um, and and that, that's essential. I know that it's easy to say, you know, Menachee had these systems in place. Portable High School has these systems. You know, Visalia Unified and Long Beach. We have to look at what our needs are and say, here are our ideas. And as a team, we need to foster that. It, it's not going to be possible to duplicate something. We have our own resources, our own students, our own needs. But at the same time, be mindful of the professional learning community of our district to say, is this in the spirit of the vision we have as a district? And, and that's a fine balance. It's an art. It's an art to sit back and, and have it all down, have it all on paper, have it all in our planning and ideation phase, have parameters in place to say, okay, we have all of these ideas, but we also have to be mindful of what everything else is going on. And I think in, in the key that Dr. Barba helped instill is we have to have an open communication about that. And we as individuals will forget things. So we have to have many, many minds to put those together to say, don't remember, you know, put this, keep this in mind. You don't want to forget this group of people. You don't want to forget this idea, this constraint. And it, it's not pretty all the time when the ideation phase and then the action phase is, it looks nice. So it's going to be messy at times, which is great, as long as we're in the spirit of, of being student-centered and thinking about systems, you know, not fragmented systems, but systems that are sustainable, that are, that are uh, independent of me as a human being. It's, it's of the role. And that's, same with, that's the same with every single entity on this campus. You know, we have to realize that we are servants and we have to be mindful. And, and I'm very excited to be able to be in that role. And, and again, that servant-minded leadership is another thing that Dr. Barber really pushed on us, that we are here at, at, to serve our, our teachers and to serve our students and parents. Um, for me, day, checking my daily motives and recalibrating why I'm here is going to be essential. I, I can't be here for anything selfish. It's all about others. Um, because again, we're facilitators of all of the things that go on on this campus. And I know at the end of the day, um, I have an obligation to support what's, ne what's best needed to happen. So this is a good question because part of the, another goal I have is in this relaunch, we have to be mindful of our multi-tier systems of supports, both academically and for social, emotional learning and behavioral issues. Now, data doesn't say everything. You know, Einstein always said that, you know, not everything that counts can be counted and not everything that, that can be counted counts. Um, and we have to be mindful of the qualitative piece too and be sensitive. Again, going back to that move slow to move fast, we have data. It's important, and some of that, we don't wanna fall into the data rich, information poor, or that drip model. We wanna look at the data and see what is meaningful for us in terms of how we respond. Now, nationwide, and especially statewide, our academic uh, data does not look great in terms of what happened in COVID. So 
one of the things that is important to know is that learning in our brains doesn't happen in a linear manner all the time. We have to be mindful of, of continuing on where we expect students and embedding and infusing in a web-like manner essential topics that we as a team collectively decide at, in our departments. What is essential that we need to embed and infuse throughout in terms of how we get our students uh, to address our learning loss needs? That's not going to happen in one year. However, systematically, we have to be mindful in how we in, in, um, in create opportunities of enrichment um, and of supports for our students because they're fully capable of raising, rising to the standards that we have and expectations we have. So long as we put all of the authentic scaffolds in place, you know, if you're going to have a football team and you have them in the weight room and all they're doing is lifting weights without spotters, they're going to fail. So we have to slowly progress to that. But however, we can't say you won't get good at, at this exercise unless you get good at bench press and so forth. The analogy is we have to look at all of the needs and, and, and sprinkle them in throughout and not just say you have to have this 10 months of prerequisite experience before we can move forward. That will wreck us if we go into that mindset. So we have to be systematic in how we support our students along the way. And they're capable of great things. You know, We just have to monitor and adjust to their needs as we begin. Part of that is just getting them the last 15 months. Most of our students haven't been in a formal school setting again. So the social, emotional needs they have in adjusting, we have to, to kind of take care of both ends of that. Um, so my goal for three years down the road is to have our students to, you know, about 80 to 90% of our expectation of where they should have been had COVID not hit. Uh, and our realistic goal is to get to that point. Um, I think it's possible with the right actions in place, but also... Uh, we have to be able to support our staff in meeting that need authentically. You know, we can't do it alone. We have to work well as a team. Um, and in our instructional departments, you know, we have to be able to support those in place with, with consultation, with our instructional coaching from our district, with us being able to, again, being visible, being authentic, being approachable to say, here are concerns, and work as a team. It would be irresponsible for me to say, my goal is to get in one year all of our students back on, play, on pace and you have a burden to get that done and here are, here's your curriculum and here's your PD. It doesn't work that way. We're in this together. So I, I plan on being in the classroom a lot, listening to students, hearing them out, having support our teachers to be able to do the same so that they can come to us and our instructional leadership team to say, you know, here's what we're hearing our students say and here's how we can respond. In addition to that, you know, I talked to a colleague today and how we do our instructional rounds district wide so that we can take and, and use the, the wealth of knowledge within our district to, to support all of our students. You know, like it or not, our students transfer to different schools and we as a team need to work together to support each other to meet those needs collectively. Um, and there's a lot of great thinking that happens in our district. So we need to take advantage of putting our heads together to come up with that. You know, one of the great things about that question is that the incoming ninth graders were seventh graders, you know, the end of their seventh grade year when COVID hit. So they didn't, they were robbed of the natural experience in that transition, so to speak, of going into a high school experience um, in a holistic set of what they experienced in eighth grade and so forth. So we have to be empathetic to the needs that they bring to the table and, and, um, and what um, their fears, their concerns, where they are. So we have to meet the students where they are in their experience. One of the things that we've been able to envision and work on as we work on uh, completing some of our team members and, and you know, we have some retirements and so forth is who are our, what are our, our desires in terms of supporting and, and inviting and, and making sure that all our incoming ninth graders, in addition to our 10th, 11th, and 12th graders, have a sense of welcome and a belonging. And so we have this idea of, you know, our students worked a lot from home. So we have to be sensitive in the timing of how we respond to certain uh, concerns they might bring to the table. You know, there might be a maturity issue with some of our students. That's okay. That's where they are. Um, there might be a fear. Uh, a lot of parents, like you said, might be mindful of our students have been used to wearing a mask um, for, for almost every element of their experience in high school or in public. So what are the habits that we're going to have to work towards in supporting? Uh, where as a school do we have to be mindful of that when there's going to be large groups of students? Are we able to do certain things the same way? So we want to be mindful of, of creating a sense of ownership. This is their school. I personally, I always think about what it's like for my own children to go through school. You know, when, if my student were a student at Grand Hills today, he's a little young still, but what would I want his experience to be? I always empathize from a parent uh, uh, standpoint of what I want for our students. I have a lens of these students, I want to treat them as if they were my own children in the sense of what do I want to do to make sure that they have a voice. Um, if we can make it happen, and we should, if it's an authentic concern or it's a great idea, let's celebrate that. You know, this is about them. So we're servants of our students. And the, the key is they're our clients. So everything we do 
has to start with that. They're our customer. They're the ones we serve. So the mentality of I, I am the old sage that tells you what to do, and yet we're coming back. Some, no, we have to be sensitive to that. We have to be mindful as a collector to say, okay, let's stop. Take a zoomed out perspective. Uh, you know, when we did, for instance, at Menachee, one of these days, we had a, a school photo opportunity to get our students to come to Menachee in the parking lot. 100% of the students that I asked, how are you doing today? They were nervous. And these were upperclassmen. They were nervous because they hadn't been in a school setting for a while. And they were mindful and conscientious about being around other people, peers, that, that lens of people are looking at them. So the social emotional learning component is real. It's authentic. We have to be responsive to that culture as well. You know, there's, Zaretta Hammond has this book that I'm starting to read. It's Cultural Responsive Teaching, which is interesting in, in challenging our own biases as adults. We grew up in a different era. This, we may as adults have handled this pandemic differently than we might have expected our youth to do. So we actually have to be authentic and transparent in listening to what their concerns are, hearing them out, digesting and processing that, come together as a team and asking questions of how we respond and, and meet those needs. It isn't going to be, um, I might have a plan in place as to what we do as a team, and we as a team might have a plan, and, and day, day one, week one, we might have to look at how the water flows in our campus and recalibrate. That's expected, that's okay. Those are the things that are kind of fun in the sense in that it's never boring. <laughs> it's never easy either. But again, nothing worth doing is easy. And that's what makes this profession so exciting is that working with youth, it, it never is the same, constant change. You know, I know we like to have a sense of calmness and, and, and the dust settling to realize, okay, we have a sense of normalcy and the machine is kind of working and functioning. But I think for the next couple of years, we will continue to build that airplane in the sky. Thank you.